Okay, let's dive into this wrist case. So looking at the Dorsey Palmer and lateral radiographs of the left wrist, the first thing that stands out is the alignment of the lunate. You'll notice that the lunate itself is sitting normally in relation to the radius. However, if we shift our attention to the capitate, there's something we don't like. It's been displaced dorsally. This is classic for a dorsal dislocation of the capitate. Now, if you take a closer look at the scaphoid, you'll notice a fracture right through the waist of the scaphoid. And this combination of findings, the dislocation, the capitate, and the scaphoid fracture, gives us what's called a transscaphoid paralunate fracture dislocation. This is a pretty serious injury. If left untreated, it can result in long-term issues like wrist instability and early arthritis, which is not something we want for our patients. From a radiological perspective, always take a moment to really evaluate the alignment of the carpal bones when looking at wrist films. On the Dorsey Palmar view, you want to trace out the Gilula's arcs, those nice smooth arcs of the carpal bones. Disruption of these arcs can signal dislocation or fracture. On the lateral view, the capitate should align with the lunate, and the lunate should align with the radius. Basically, everything should form a straight line. In this case, the capitate is displaced dorsally, breaking that alignment. Now imagine you're in an FRCR exam, and the examiner might ask, what complications are associated with missed paralunate injuries? So, the answer you'd want to give is that missed injuries can lead to chronic wrist instability and early degenerative arthritis, both of which could severely impair hand function. They could also ask, what's your immediate next step? In this case, if it hasn't already been done, you'd need to get in touch with the referring clinician urgently because this is an injury that requires prompt reduction, often under surgical conditions. These injuries can't be left untreated for long. All right, so this is where we're going to wrap up case 45. If you found this explanation helpful, make sure to subscribe to Radiology Made Easy for more concise and high-yield radiology content. And hey, why not leave a comment down below? Let me know if you've ever come across a paralunar injury or if you have any questions about wrist trauma cases. I love hearing from you all, and it helps me create better content for you. Also, don't forget, radiology is all about the details. The more you spot on the films, the better equipped you'll be, whether it's for your exams or your daily practice. So stay sharp, and I'll catch you in the next case.